morning. We talked a lot about trying to quiet the mind and all these things we can do to quiet it. One thing that I found does not work is being given the task of talking here today. <laughs> yeah. I was very surprised when I was invited to talk today because mostly what I am up here talking about, if anything, is being quiet. Uh, the peace generator, which, by the way, in the bulletin <laughs> is not mentioned. Uh, it's Friday after this coming one. And the other thing, uh, grocery cards. Going to pile up, as usual. Uh, let's see. Oh, who I am. Craig Harvey, I'm, my background is an engineer, many years, I'm, I've graduated from that now, uh, but I've always had this little bit of toe in the, the woo-woo, maybe even more than a toe in the woo-woo side of things, so you know, I figure that makes me a woo-woo engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and with any luck, I will irritate some of you Maybe all of you at one point or another piss some of you off. That's good, that means you're engaged. Uh, and there will be uh, an open mic time when I'm done spouting up here. So if you wanna, if I piss you off, just hold on to that and get ready to throw it back at me with your view of things when I'm done talking. Uh, no fruit though, please. Somebody mentioned that they had some with them. Okay. So this is all just sharing my beliefs, my observations based on my experiences in life, uh, which could differ greatly from yours, and that's fine. Uh, some things I've heard that are good to have in a talk are, you know, stuff, personal stuff from my heart. You know, be vulnerable, throw in some humor, maybe some quotes from famous people. Uh, so maybe I'll get some of all that in there. Uh, I already mentioned the vulnerability part. I'm trying to get that over with fast. That's not <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, and also, if I just need a moment for quiet up here and close my eyes, as long as I don't start snoring, just go with it. <laughs> What else? Oh, it's also a little funny. I figure basically what I'm talking about is you know, the fundamentals of existence, little stuff like that. And it's all beyond words. I mean, when you really get down to it, it's beyond words. So what the heck am I up here talking for anyway?
there. It's what it's what makes it possible for us all to communicate. It's that that ether, that something that that we are all part of. Otherwise, we just have our own little universe and talk to ourselves all the time. Anyway. So, so if, if there's this beyond goodness, beyond everything that includes all the, the positive stuff, the negative stuff, then, and then there's us sort of pretending to go around in bodies and be our individual small selves, sometimes not quite so small, a little bit bigger. Uh, is that all there is? I don't know. The way I look at it, there's... And this somehow goes on continuously, but it's, you, know, you got the good God, you know, and yeah, we have, we really want that goodness out there. My license plate says, love is, you know, so I do believe there's, there's love out there, we're surrounded by it, but part of that is us creating it and us choosing it whenever we are able to. And there's, I have no doubt that there are wonderful, you know, call them what, ascended masters, enlightened beings, whatever, who aren't, don't have the trouble of dealing with these, you know, mortgage payments and stuff. They don't have these bodies to worry about. And they're, they have good stuff flowing to us and that they can help us. What do you call them? You know, Jesus, Jeshua, Muhammad, or sorts of angels and all these uh, beings. You know, pick one, pick a bunch of them. I think I think they're there, one way or another. Uh, so why are we here? This is another one. This is my chance. This is my big open mic chance to provide all my get off all my irritations with everything I've been hearing in their faith. <laughs> All these years. Uh, we're, I believe that we are not here for the purpose. How to put this, get rid of too many double negatives. We're not here not to get out of here. If it doesn't make sense to me that our purpose for being here for coming here, for creating all this drama, and doing it, is to not be here, is to get out of all this. That, it just does not compute to me. So, in that case, why would we be here? Why would we choose to be here, to exist every day, to incarnate in the first place, maybe to have, at some higher level that we barely ever connect with, participate in creating this whole universe, why? It's like, well, I think it's because it's fun, it's exciting. There's so much drama. We, I mean, people put a lot of, people put their whole lives and get paid to create drama. You know, we, we pay to go see them dramatize things on the screen, on the stage, via music, via whatever. The, right? And you're sitting there listening to it. You, some of you are, may even be enjoying a little bit of it. That's, that's cool. Uh, so, we have, it's, it's a game. We, I mean, it's so many games going on all at once. And some of them are joyful, some of them are fun, some, some of them we feel like we win, some of them we keep striving to try to win. Uh, like keeping our house from crumbling away, keeping nature from taking over our yards, uh, you know, those sort of continuous games. Those are a couple of my favorite ones. <laughs> uh, yeah. And maybe, maybe part of what God is or the creative force is giving us the, the basic I don't know, pieces, the, the ability to create a game. It's like, you know, Parker Brothers or whatever they're called, 
Monopoly. They give you the board, they give you the pieces to play with, and then they throw in these rules. It's like, that's the part that I have a problem with, or a slightly different take on. It's like, the rules are fine, you know, if you just open up the box and say, what the, is this? What do I do with it? Say, oh, here's some rules, let's, let's try this out, and, and then you can have a game, and knowing all the while that you're in the game, playing it, and you don't have to be there. You can step back, you can watch other people play the game. But, uh, so this, this rule thing, I forgot to look at the clock, I should watch that. That's <laughs> <laughs> just a rule. <laughs> Thank you, man. Okay, because uh, I do want to leave time for feedback. Maybe that's a stupid thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> We have this wonderful big sandbox, monopoly board, whatever you want to call it. And we have various people come along and give us rules to go by. And, uh, there's always different sets of laws depending on where you are on the game board, and how old you are, and all this stuff. But when you get right down to it, there are no rules. There, it's we create life whatever we want to be. I mean. If you just look around society, your friends and family, and out there in the newspapers, you see those people are creating rules they want, right? And so, obviously, uh, the rules are flexible, malleable, and we create them for ourselves. We try to create them for other people. Uh, that gets everybody into trouble. So, oh, right. How do I fit this in? Creation, responsibility, we are creative. I hope nobody has too big an argument with that part, that we have some ability to create. And now I want, I want to do a little exercise with you, give you an opportunity to do that and take responsibility for it. This is like the most powerful thing you can do. So with your eyes open or closed, just get a picture of an elephant. Probably fairly easy to do. We've all seen elephants or seen pictures of them and you can just pull them up. And it's probably gray and it has a trunk and four legs and that. So maybe that's not terribly creative because you feel like you're just pulling something out of your memory, possibly. So now get creative. Make that elephant orange. Got that orange elephant there. Now, just in case you think that's just slight modification of something, make it a, you know, throw in some, you know, purple polka dots. We're not talking about clothing the elephant. This is a creature with orange elephant with purple polka dots. Okay. So you can open your eyes. Now, who created that ridiculous thing? I was, okay. I forgot the last step. I forgot it. Okay. Last step. Oh now, you can start take an elephant or any other creature you choose. Pick any color scheme you choose. Go. Okay. I am not responsible for that one. That's you. So claim that responsibility. That's what we do with our life every day. Everything we're doing, we're generating it. We're using whatever creative potential ability we get from that thing out there, up there, inside, wherever it is. But we're doing it. And that brings us to something like, you know, peace. This, this world peace thing that I get into dreaming about and imagining. It's like, it's up to us, collectively, individually. It's like, why don't we just do it? <sighs> However, oh, vulnerability, right. You might know what that is. Now I gotta, I, I need to share this one. Uh, 
yesterday morning, I woke up and I got this concept that it was like one of those uh-oh things. You know, I know, since I know I'm always right and always know how things really work, and, and then getting hit with this idea that maybe something's a little askew there. Um, so my view is it's easy to not, to, to not generate war and agitation and that peace ought to be simply just be quiet at the appropriate times. <laughs> And that's obviously from my viewpoint. I happen to be pretty good at that. Uh, although I have found that under certain stressing situations, even I can throw in words that aren't the most helpful instead of just being quiet. But it occurred to me that other people, there are probably some people who find it very easy to generate loving, uplifting, supportive, words. Whereas for me, it's like, I'm very good at the quiet part, but there are a lot of times when I would like to be able to say things, because I know there's something wonderful, useful, helpful that could be said, and I can't do it. It's just, yeah, yeah thank you. I have not yet been good, able to get good at that. And other people I've seen are good at that. The, the expression, expressing expression, part of it comes easily. It can be so uplifting, so peace. And, and yet I make them wrong for not being able to be quiet at the right time. I can do the quiet part pretty well. They can do the loving expression really well. And that means that sometimes they may not be as good at being the quiet part, and so negative stuff comes up expressively as opposed to holding it inside like I do. Anyway, uh, it's all good, I suppose. So the fundamentals of who we are, connecting, once we, uh, however we got here, you know, whether it's some ultimate being just has a thought of, let's, let's create life and let it do it at once, and it gradually separation out. Oh, creation is separation, by the way. You can't create something and not be separate from it to some degree. And so the more that that goes on, we get more and more separated, more and more differences, more and more conflict, potential. And, but what's the alternative? No creation? Well, no, let's go back to just all being one nothing. No thought. As soon as you have a thought, you have a creation, you have separateness. Get used to it. You know? <laughs> so, if you have, so the fundamental is here. You got, say you have a couple beings out there that somehow got created. And I'm borrowing this from a friend of mine, the first point here. The fundamental communication is here I am. I exist, here I am. And then I see you over there. There's another being, amazing. Then what happens? Then you say, watch this. See that? I created that. See it? Isn't that cool? And they may agree or not. And they might then say, oh, here's my creation. And I look at it and say, that's cool. Or I say, eh, I, that one doesn't get me. I bet I could be better. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, somebody asked me to mention something about Adam, no, about envy and shame. They didn't tell me whether they were related and what they wanted to say, but I got thinking about it and I could see how it could be sort of a cycle. If you have envy, something, and then you feel ashamed for envying and not being worthy of having whatever it is, and then you envy them more because you feel worse about yourself, and then you feel worse about yourself because you're and being something. Anyway, I was thinking about that, and it's all just different levels of separation, but the way out of that, at least one potential way out, would be admiration. You see something you like out there, or somebody that you think has something that you don't have, instead of envy, just tweak that a little bit over toward admiration. Say, That's cool. I admire that. That's what you obviously do, or you wouldn't be envying them. Uh, so just, and then part of the admiration is that the 
extends your sphere of feeling of having, of being one with whatever it is that you were envying. You, you just let yourself expand and admire it and embrace it. And then you don't have to envy. It, it doesn't, there's less need for envy. It's like, and, and you're bigger, so you don't feel quite as much shame about the whole thing. It's like, it's all good. The, the spiral starts going the other way. You just throw in admiration and love. That's all, man. Yeah. I'm pretty easy to say, I know. Uh, and I think I should start wrapping this up. Oh. <laughs> Brief <laughs> surrender. That's one of those things that irritates me. <laughs> but, but I see a place for surrender. I see, the way I look at it is, you can get caught up, we all, any of us, I, I should, I'm going to focus all this on me. I can get caught up focusing on one little problem like, how to make my car stop vibrating if I got the wrong wheel on there or something, something's not right. And I can get, you know, sort of obsessive about making it right and get all narrowly focused in and, and hitting a brick wall trying to make it work. And so that's a case where I think surrender and my definition of it would be backing up, relaxing, allowing your view instead of being focused, to just breathe, look at the bigger picture, and bigger and bigger, you know, feel those connections you have with supportive people, maybe somebody knows the answer to help you out or something, or just you know, one of those spiritual entities that you like to connect with. Just let that flow, and that's, a form of surrender or definition of it that works for me. And, but then you surrender and that frees you up. You can take in more of the wonderful life energy and then you can exercise your power to do stuff, to do that dramatic creation of life. Uh, I don't see surrender as you know, the ultimate thing to just stay with all the time because that will get you back to no life, no drama, no existence and you're out of the game, out of the sandbox, so, okay, I hope I'm getting ready for that open mic time to, and your, your chance to piss me off. Oh, I had fun, this creation responsibility thing, I, I had fun watching the movie that came out recently called The Adjustment Bureau, <laughs> it's about free will versus the plan. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> I think, yeah, so we're not just expressions of divinity, we are divinity expressing. That's a good way to end it, I think. So, now it's your turn. <laughs>